Welcome back to Empowered the Podcast. I'm your host, Linda Brand. I'm so glad you're here. Today's episode is part two with Brian Mirabella. He is a health and wellness expert. He's a breathing expert. He is a fruitarian, and he has a story, and I am so excited to bring you part two. If you missed the first part, go back and listen. It is not necessary to hear this episode. And if you enjoy, as always, please share with someone that you think would benefit and leave a review. It means so much to me. He is telling us how he changed his life, what prompted him to change his life, what prompted him to stop eating meat, what made you change. So it was the blessing from the horrible divorce, right? Yeah, no, that that was what made me change was at four, that was at 29, at 46, when my acupuncturist told me that I would have a heart attack. Then I said, okay, I'm changing my life because many people get that kind of information. They don't change their life. One of my best friends or my best friend in the world, he's had his throat surgically, he take things taken out like polyps two or three times and he continued to smoke. Um, You know, that's because when you're acidic, you can't stop yourself. But when I was told that I changed like, immediately right so you changed at 46 but you were going to acupuncture so you were taking actions yeah but you were still drinking or were you you still drinking i I was drinking but not that often you know and you were eating animals and everything i did i no i'd stopped eating animals uh oh shit i would say 11 years it's been almost 13 because i'm almost 55 yeah so i was saying 11 to 13 years and what what made you do that eating animals because my body odor was terrible every time i passed gas it was the worst the worst possible smell because all of that was rotting inside of me and i couldn't go to the bathroom i had irritable bowel syndrome i sometimes i was constipated sometimes i had diarrhea and then i just started researching and i was like okay i'm gonna i'm gonna stop eating uh, meat and, and flesh. And then of course it didn't just, right. It was like, I'd go two weeks and then I was like, okay, I'll have a little bit. And then I'd go a month and then it would sneak back in. So I guess that's why it's really only been 11 years. Yeah. So, Oh, okay. So you would start feeling better and then you would have a little bit of fish or a little bit of something. Is that, that's, oh my God, we're on the same. That was, that's me. That's literally me. And I, I have this nutrition coach and she's basically told me gluten-free and vegan and no processed. And we did that for two weeks and it was freaking amazing. I was able to eat bananas and rice and still go to the bathroom. So I think this is like, it's it's also our probably yours and my post-trauma stuff too that causes the digestive. It's not just the things we're consuming. I think there's other factors it's all in your mind. It's, it's the stress that you've experienced in your life. Yeah. Yeah. It does throw your chakras out of balance. It does throw your energy out of balance. And then you're going to crave things that create drama and stress in your life. Yeah. You're going to reflect to the universe what you have not healed within yourself. Well, when I sold my home and moved to Florida two years ago, I did a quantum shift and I've been healing ever since at massive, like massive growth. And I'm very safe here. Like I've had one man in my, I always tell people (laughs) my apartment besides maintenance and my son, there's been one man in here. (laughs) Like I'm so private with my home. It's my sanctuary. Um, I feel about that. That's me too. I had a sex addiction as well. Oh, right. yeah. I can give all that up. And now, you know, I mean, I'm remarried, but. Oh, you uh, are married? That's amazing. Yeah. When did you get married? Uh, five years ago. <laughs> oh, so you were married when we had our interview 20 yeah. and 22. Oh, you're amazing. Oh, congratulations. I didn't even know you were married. That's so funny. Um, what does your wife do? Uh, she works for a creative sustainable development company, okay. but she doesn't follow my lifestyle at all. She's not vegan either. Oh. And, um, I don't mind. It doesn't oh, matter yeah. what she does with her body. Yeah, yeah. Um, and she doesn't care what I do. Okay. So if we go out to eat, that's when I have to eat salads or yeah. I might have to have a vegetable. 
Okay. But otherwise, I'm eating in New York City. You can get fruit everywhere. So that's beautiful. Yeah. No, I, I was at a vegan meetup the other day, and this guy was there with the wedding ring, a younger man, and he he's his wife eats meat too, and he wasn't she wasn't there, but it was it was just yeah. That's it is what it is. Um, usually it's the woman though. That usually it's the woman though that's vegan and man. Um, but something else came to my uh, mind. Oh, how important is organic vegetable or fruit, organic fruit? How important is that? And then I think you told me you helped heal someone that didn't have a lot of money and she used fruits that were not organic. Yeah, the story where you're remembering is was not me. Dr. Morse has said, I've had people who are you know, under the poverty line who can only shop at Walmart. And I've had people that had stage four cancer that healed themselves on Walmart grapes, which are not organic. They're GMO pesticide, everything. But the fruit itself, because it's grown in the sun, it's got structured water, it's got living enzymes, even though it's GMO, the fruit still allowed the body to heal itself because the body did not have to process acidity it could get rid of its acidity. And then the body healed itself. And I'm not a healer. I teach pe people healing modalities, but I can't heal anybody. I can only guide someone and their body heals themselves. Yeah. There is no such thing as a healer, actually. If a person calls themselves a healer, they're not a healer. Well, the thing is, we, the body goes into instant repair. You cut yourself, the body goes into instant repair. Right. We have we have a powerful, I think we do have healing hands. I, I think we are way more powerful and magical than anybody gives us credit for. I yeah. grew up without, you know, much religion of any kind, not that religion's the way, but like something. <laughs> I have, I'm spiritual today. I'm studying Course in Miracles too, but. Nice. Is that, yeah. Do you, okay. Do you, do you, I, I, I know about it. Yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah, I think that we don't give our bodies the credit. Like it's a powerful machine and we're just, we've been programmed and brainwashed to feed certain yeah. things that are hurting us and making yeah, us for sick. The first five years of my life of, of my chiropractor, I went to him for healing. Never once did I think that it was me doing the healing when I was on his table. It took me about five years to actually calm down and then to realize that he's only facilitating my own body to heal itself. So yes, of course, your body has all these healing properties and energies, but he's only ever shifting energies and the body heals itself. Yeah. Right? He's got a gift to shift energies, but he's not doing any healing on me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then- heals so if someone was in a car crash and their body was, you know, affected, can they still be healing themselves through all of these modalities, breathing and proper nutrition? Yeah, of course, it depends on the level of trauma and injury. But yes, of course, okay. you can you overcome anything. Yeah, I, mean, I, I was love that. My eyesight's gotten better. My smell has gotten better. My hearing's gotten better. Mm. I used to be insomniac for 25 years. Now I could sleep through the night, most nights. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. You can, you can put your, your body back into a state of neurological safety. Yeah. And when you're in, when you're living in parasympathetic energy, you shift when you do sympathetic things, you don't shift because a sympathetic Activity means you're burning energy. Yet people who do holotropic breathing and all this other breathing where they, they hyperventilate and they force these things out, just because you're having a traumatic outpouring of emotions doesn't mean you've shifted anything. And everyone will like, well, well, I feel better afterwards. Yeah, but what about in six months from now? Because that shift didn't create more parasympathetic tone it created more sympathetic tone and the only way the body can shift is in stillness mm -hmm. that's why I, the buddha practiced some he was a samana for years 
And Tell us, what does that mean, Savannah? I don't know what well, that you're is. Just walking the forest and living on nothing with no possessions and eating very little and practicing asceticism where he would starve himself. But he was trying to force enlightenment. And then he had a realization, long story short, and then when he decided to finally sit under the Bodhi tree, he attained enlightenment in a very short period of two years. But he, he sat still, right? And when you sit still, you stop breathing. And when you stop breathing, it's not because you're not breathing because you're holding your breath. It's that you're in such a neurological safe place that when you exhale, you don't need to breathe in again. It could go by seconds, minutes even. So the longer you don't have to breathe in, the better you're doing. That's really? why we test called the Bolt test, which is a carbon dioxide tolerance test. So we can test people to see how what their breathing biochemistry is like. And 99% uh, of all the people I've worked with are breathing poorly. Mm. Interesting. Nine yeah, because yeah, I meditate. And when I notice that I'm not breathing, I start breathing intentionally because and I want to focus on my breath. Well, it depends, though, you might be in a place where your breath pauses naturally. If it's happening naturally, let it happen. You, if you're holding your breath and it's uncomfortable, then you're going to feel that it's uncomfortable. That's not good. But if you breathe out, and hold your breath, you're not holding it. It happened naturally. The advanced meditators stop breathing, not on purpose, but because they're in such a neurological safe place that the body doesn't need to inhale again. You only need to take one breath per minute, but most people are breathing above 15 breaths per minute. But Yogananda, his guru, Babaji, who's still alive, he's over 2,000 years old. What? <laughs> 2,000. He's a sannyasi, a sannyasi. And he has taught his disciples a, uh, a method called Kaya Kalpa, where they remove all the obstructions from the body. So for over 2,000 years, he looks like he's 25. And he's not within this energetic realm he can go in and out of the energetic realms and there's not that many of them but they're in the hills and mountains of india and tibet and if it wasn't for them we would be not doing very well right now mm. they their energy their advanced energy is why we're slowly ascending right that's what the bible talks about the 144,000. so those 144,000 enlightened souls are the reason that we have not delved too deeply into the demonic realms. We're being held up. And now it's up to the rest of us to increase our energy. Mm. So, yeah, and, and I know that something's definitely happening where we're all waking up. Right. Well, there's no such thing as darkness. Darkness only exists in the absence of light. So people want to call out the darkness but it just means that more light is being transmitted into the planet. That's the 26,000 year procession. And as we start to attain more light from our supermassive black hole, then the darkness is exposed. So now people are seeing what's really happening on the planet. But it doesn't mean that we're going backwards. We are most certainly going forwards. Yeah. Well, miracles are seen in light. Yeah. Miracles are seen in the light and that's what you have to, and, you know, it's all like what you put whatever you believe. Right. So if you focus on negativity, you will find it. Same with darkness, but if you focus on positivity and the light, you will find that too. Like I follow Gabby Bernstein and all that. So she always references the course in miracles and yeah, I love it so much. It's just powerful. Yeah. Yeah. What do you align with? Buddhist? Uh, yeah, Buddhism. And it's not a religion. It's a philosophy. Yeah. The Buddha would never have expected anybody to revere him. Right? Bo B the Buddha called it meditative flow. So I'm not looking for miracles to happen. I'm looking for my life to be a miracle. 
Yeah. So right. I'm living in a state of flow. Yeah. yeah. Right. When you're in flow, it's just, you know, like I was on a live earlier and it's like good or bad, we'll see. Like nothing is good or bad. It's just, right? Yeah. It's only in the mind of a human being, but. Yeah, wanted and unwanted, really. It's just good or bad, we'll see, right? So it's, yeah, things that are perceived to be negative are actually tend to be end up being positive. But um, right. <laughs> yeah, there's always an underlying blessing, right? We just don't see it at first. Right. Um, I love that. So what else? Tell us when is your next course? So you said tomorrow, which we won't you won't be airing this, but you said June, June or May. May. Yeah. Well, if today is April, uh, tomorrow is April 16th. So it'll be four Tuesdays. I'm not really sure. So the next one, one, two, three, four. It's on your one, website. It Well, no, because this one's going now on March, on April 16th. So the next one will be May 14th. On Tuesdays for how yep. long? An hour? That's about an hour and a half. Okay. People and don't have to be there for live class. They, they get the emails, uh, the recordings emailed to them. So you can do it whenever you want and you have it forever. So, yes. And then you, Brian, have a lot of videos out there too, that they can just watch. My Instagram channel is litter. That's where I put all my information. So, oh, good. And that's breath underscore verse, the -E E-R-S-E. Focused on health and happiness and wellness. Yeah. That's amazing. And I don't even really put very many things of my life on there because I want my Instagram to be a, a running textbook, if you will, of what you can do to get healthy. Yeah. And tell us about your, your routine with your body. Like you're in amazing shape. How many days a week are you in the gym or what, what, what are you doing? Um, well, I do my breathing. Ex I do my brain activation techniques every single morning. Then that follows with my breathing exercises. And then I go to the gym, but I don't train hard. I train effectively and I don't stress my body to the point where the training becomes to where I'm exhausted or even a little bit tired. As soon as I start to feel a little tired in my workout, I stop because I'm not looking to stress my body beyond repair. I want to be able to recover from the workout and be able to do it again tomorrow. So my weekly or my daily routine takes me about 35, 40 minutes. And then that's it. That's all I work out. And that, that's always with being able to breathe well. Is that seven days a week you're doing that? No, I work out four, maybe five times a week. And again, it's never to a hard level because... No animal will exhaust themselves to do that. Only humans. Mm. And how about um, cardiovascular? Are you doing that or just no? Um, I do sprinting work two or three times a week, but I hold my breath when I'm doing it. So I don't run distance. I run shorter distances as fast as I can without breathing. Mm. So I'm stressing my body on that level, but it's at a level that is good for me. And I'm trying to get, it's like Tim, Tim Ferriss, where I'm trying to do, get more out of doing less with everything I do. Mm, me too. I love that. That's so good. We can make more money and do less work. Yeah, we can. It's proven. Amazing. Thank you so much. Is there anything else you want to share? Just yeah, just for people to be very aware that this time we're in is a tumultuous time. And the thing that they can do most importantly is really to learn to breathe through their nose. I mean, I'm telling you, it makes a world of difference in your physiology is to learn to breathe through your nose a hundred percent of the time. And you will see your life drastically change. And then you want to be able to learn how to activate your sensory cortex, which gives you more energy and, you know, to be kind, number one to yourself and number one to the people who are not kind to you, be kind back to them because there's no reason you have to get triggered. If they're not physically touching you, then who cares how they treat you? If you care, it's because you lack something inside of yourself. 
So I live in New York City, 8 million people, and people are angry and moody all day. And I don't, I don't let it bother me because it, it has nothing to do with me. <laughs> well, you have, make- well, you have inner peace and we don't have to allow, you're giving your power to others if you allow somebody that you don't even know to affect how you feel about you, right? So this yeah. is, that's very wise, beautiful um, share. Yes, be kind. And the people that, are mean or whatever need that kindness more than anything and we don't know how they became that way right that's the thing you know we don't know and it's usually you know we we all have healing i tell everybody has trauma wounds something little t big t trauma we all have healing to do And those people, you know, and it's like people have had it 10 times worse than you or me, 10 times worse. And they're out there, you know, try being homeless. Come on. Yeah, I know. I don't want to. That's my worst fear. (laughs) I'm not going to try it. So, um, but yeah, thank you so much. This is beautiful. Um, Yeah, I could talk to you for hours. There's so much, you have so much information, your wealth of knowledge. How did you, how do you know when you're getting, like you're getting information? How do you know if it's good or not? Like you can read so much on the internet and everywhere. I mean, this is a really good question. Like you have these powerful, you know, Dr. Morris and Professor Ehert, like who, how do you know what you're reading is good or yeah. not or yeah. only through experience when i started my fruit journey five years ago i told my acupuncturist what i was going to do he's a qigong master he said i don't think you should do that i said well i respect your opinion but i'm going to give it a try because i won't know until i do it and it turned out i was right <laughs> i was right for me not saying i was right for everybody but i was right for me and he said wow this is incredible and now five years later he's like you were right to do what you did because it has worked for you. So you have to discern information. I'm not a teacher. I'm only sharing breath knowledge and nutrition knowledge, but I do not consider myself a teacher because the person that I might be teaching, I can also learn from. So there is no hierarchy. It's just constantly sharing. And I'm always just discerning information I get all the time. So if I read Arid or I read Morse, I discern and I go, okay, that sounds pretty cool. Let me see how it works. Let me go through it. And then I develop, you know, my own process. Yeah. So now it's the Brian Mirabella method, but then I also accolades to the people that I learned from. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I also like listen and read. And then I'm like, if I like it, I'm going to use it. If I like what I'm reading and hearing, I want that belief. Yeah, that's a belief I want to have. I'm going to do it. You know what I mean? Versus like, because yeah, you can read all these different things and hear all these different ways of, you know, like people are out there only eating meat right now. Yeah. Yeah. I I also muscle test. So I do applied kinesiology on my body. So, you know, the circle test, but I use my body. I stand up and if my body moves forward. Let's say I'm holding a bowl of pistachio nuts, which I love. And I say, this is good for me. And my body moves back. I still have the opportunity to eat them. Even though my higher self said, that's not good for you. I can still do it and get away with it. But my body will pay the price. Even if I don't feel it in the moment, it's going Mm -hmm. to pay the price. Mm -hmm. But if I hold up Brazil nuts, because I can only eat three nuts, Brazil walnuts and macadamia. And if I hold up Brazil nuts and I say, this is good for my body, my body moves forward. So I muscle test yeah. certain things or about people or should I work with this person? And I muscle test. Yeah. Learn from this person. Okay. And if no, I listen to my higher self. Yeah, so I, I had. Oh, my oh, that's amazing. Yeah, I had one. I've had that muscle testing done before you definitely have to believe in that but it does work um but marine phytoplankton i wanted to ask you what is the brand that you take 
Yeah, they're a company called ascendedhealth.com. Okay, Ascended Health. Because I know that you said there's some out there that could be like toxic or something, right? Yeah, they're they're expensive. And the cheaper version, which is still good, is called Plankton Holland. Plankton, how do you spell the second word? Holland, the country. Oh, Holland, okay. And that one's cheaper, but in, in just as good. Or I mean, it's not just as good, but, but it's not toxic. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. And then the marine plankton, you take that every day, phytoplankton. Yeah, for the last eight years. Nice. And uh, a supplement, it's food. It's not a supplement, it's food. Yeah, it's real food. So you're giving your body the essential building blocks every single day, two or three times a day. You could actually live on it. You wouldn't even need food. I've done seven a seven day water fast on it and I felt great on my seventh day. I didn't even feel like I needed to eat. But and I gotta go. Thank you for being here. It was wonderful seeing you again. Thank you so much. Wonderful seeing you too, Linda. Thank you to all your listeners. I appreciate you. Absolutely. Have a great day. Are you too? Bye. Thank you.